Hi everybody, we're here today on Humanitarian Chronicles with a real life hero, my personal real life hero, Dr. Brian Clement, PhD in nutrition, uh, biochemist, scientific expert, and truly it's so appropriate that I have you on the show today, Dr. Clement, because I base my life based on before I met Brian and after I met Brian. So it's perfect that you're here today because you are such an integral part of my life, my health, my journey here in informing the world about health. And thank you for being alive and being who you are. Well, I appreciate all of those accolades and nice comments about me. You know, my, my wife thinks the same, before <laughs> Brian and after Brian. Oh, <laughs> that's the best part. <laughs> Amen. And I know that for a fact because I've talked to Anna Maria and she's an incredible woman. And that just says so much about you that you've maintained your how many year marriage? How long have 35, you been? 35. 35 year marriage to this beautiful woman, four children, numerous grandchildren. Proof is in the pudding of your amazing, deep, insightful soul. Um, Brian is the director of the foremost healing center, in my opinion, and other people's as well on earth, the Hippocrates Health Institute, where I got my health educator certification. I was privileged enough to live there for three months, almost. I saw, I won't even call it miraculous because Brian, as you know, Dr. Clement, it's just the norm. When a, a field looks brown and it hasn't been watered or given proper nutrients for a few years and it's been in a drought and then you water it properly, it grows in green and comes back to life. And that's exactly what we've seen people do at Hippocrates over its how many years? This is our 60th anniversary. I knew that. I knew that. Yay! And you've been the director for 40 of those years. Since 1980. Oh my gosh. Oh God. Okay. So Almost 40. More than 40. 40. No, no, no. Okay. Almost 40. Numbers. <laughs> Numbers. Anyway, thank you so much. And so how did you come to be where you are? How did you actually awaken and realize the logical truth about health? Well, I think as many people, if not all, I came from fear. I was fearful of my own body, which was out of control. I was a big obese guy. I was fearful of my habits smoking cigarettes, smoking grass every day for a decade. I was fearful of my anger. You know, all of the different things that precipitate disorder. Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate because I was uh, lucky enough to meet somebody who basically said to me, you can change, there's another option. You don't have to be a macho brain dead man that just curses and spits. You know, you could be sensitive and have empathy and, and be aware. And it didn't feel good at first, I'll tell you that. It was much easier to spit and curse and just be a macho. Yeah. And uh, slowly but surely, I recognized that uh, by changing my diet, it actually tickled my imagination and made me tune into something bigger than myself, the larger whole. And that's, I think, how everyone transforms. You know, I've had a blessing. I've worked with 265,000 people. Uh, here as a director of Hippocrates, as well as in Europe when I was running and developing centers. And every one of these people that take life serious and also joyous, uh, who heal themselves, do the same thing. We, we're fearful and we transform. We go back to ourselves. We don't find something new. We go back to where we came from. Right. Amen. Amen. Thank God that you did because your voice actually has the power to help others transform too. Sometimes when I say certain logical things that I think are just intuitive and logical, like don't eat murdered corpse. I mean, death breeds death. Life begets life. Eat life and you'll be alive. People are just like, whatever, you know. But when a PhD doctor of nutrition male says it, people tend yeah, to listen. Unfortunately, the last one is true, unfortunately. I know. Well, I, I told my parents to get off dairy uh, when I woke up 20 years ago. And, you know, my dad, weight gain, his tennis game was down, arthritis, uh, knee problems. And when a male doctor 20 years later told him dairy is poison, he got off of it. And he's like, I feel amazing. I should have listened to you 20 years ago. I'm like, well, too bad I was that little female daughter of yours. But anyway, I'm, I'm glad for the male doctors. So thank you for being there. Um, well, I'm glad for women. As a matter of fact, I think if we listen more for, to women, there are mothers, there are sisters, uh, you know, there are friends. 
uh, that we'd be much better off because one thing I have noticed about my side of the species is that we are pretty much on a rail. As long as you keep this train on a rail, we're fine. Where ladies have an innate ability to see larger and maybe have a little more foresight and insight and hindsight. So I think it's time in our, in our world, our culture, our society to start to honor and respect the feminine, the maternal part of it. I do in my life and it's only done me good. And now you see why I have Brian on the show. Thank you for sharing that wisdom. That's right. Um, why do you think that a lot of women and men nowadays have just completely lost touch with that innate sense of just logic and reasoning and go blindly like sheep to the slaughter to get, let's say, body parts removed when they don't need to and instead of changing their life, eating healthy, uh, practicing healthy lifestyle choices, could you please speak well, to that? Pretty, it's pretty simple. This, this is a, a well thought out and well planned process that uh, we no longer live in democracies or republics. We live in corporate controlled governance. And if you look back and there is written history, I know nobody prefers to read anymore. We get our news as our new president elect says from the, from uh, news channels, from news shows, we don't read, but there is a history of this. And we know, for instance, going back at the turn of the century, that the meat and dairy industry in 1917 started to afford academia donations so that they could influence the education our children would have. So that's when we took the 12 foods that were in different groups, uh, knocked eight of them away, kept four, and one was meat and dairy food. So this is well thought out. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry that started 90, 100 years ago uh, in its heyday basically recognized that medicine from the entire history of humanity was herbal medicine and a little bit of homeopathic medicine. And they were able to, in one generation, to make that old folklore, what grandma would have done, displace it and make everyone convinced that the modern uh, docs in the white jackets and the stethoscopes knew more than the old fashioned ones and took complete control worldwide of healthcare and medicine, and it has nothing to do with health. And so the politicians do the same thing. I mean, we're talking now in our, in our culture here in the United States about fake news. Uh, this is nothing new. Maybe it was so obvious this year, it's been going on so often this year that we notice it. But fake news, I read a wonderful book years ago, Whatever Happened to Kansas? It showed back in 1970s, late 70s, how they had to plan to do exactly what they're doing right now. How religion started this. Let's get right to it. Totally. Uh, the first governments in the world were not governments, they were religions that were manipulating, controlling people. And what do they tell us? Uh, we're the right religion, join us, and you won't burn, you won't go to hell, and everyone else is, is a heathen and horrible. So, you know, this elitist and controlling and manipulating uh, activity is something that is, is always always used by people who are out of control who want to take control. Wow. Well said. I, and I love what Wayne Dyer said about it too. He said, how could religion be from God if it just breeds more contempt for each other and judgment? That's not God. So yeah, I, I just thank you for speaking to that. And it's unbelievable to me how people have just believed people just because they're wearing a white coat with a stethoscope maybe they were miseducated in school we just we're not thinking for yeah, ourselves not, and, and you know and, uh, when i was younger and more naive i used to get angry at the doc and it's not the doc it's the system right i don't know many doc i have never met one let's be honest i know fairly well 2000 medical doctors globally and i don't know one of them at 18 who said i want to go to school 12 years to make money they did it because their mother died or their brother got sick or their neighbor did or somebody they loved. And they had the academic increment to say, I want to go and be educated. And they did it for the right reason. But little did they know or suspect at 18 years old that literally uh, they were being persuaded by and funded by the pharmaceutical industry. Definitely. And there's a place for this. I'm not saying it's completely wrong all of the time, but it's a minimal place. It's for It's for diagnostics. It's for emergency care and where have we lost our senses where we don't recognize that our lifestyle governs our outcome uh, every outcome has a cause and the cause of sickness is a horrible lifestyle starting with a negative attitude 
the way you eat, lack of exercise, the environment we live in. Uh, Europe is a little more mature than we are, and the serious researchers there are now talking seriously about epigenetics. Now, that's really our lifestyle causing the disease. Rather than hear the old laborious thing that it's genetic, it's not genetic. That's Very right. few diseases are genetic. The geneticist will tell you this. The biologists won't, because they're so brainwashed on this. Totally. And the geneticist will say less than 5% is genetic. It's You've caused the problem. Yep, it's been hijacked. The, the whole genetics thing, as you said, as I've heard you say before, has been hijacked by the system. It's not genetics. You don't need to go get your breasts removed. You don't have a BRCA gene. <laughs> it's a lie. It's your lifestyle that either eggs it on or not. And, you know, that's what I've studied. That's what you've studied. Um, so could you please, now that we're talking about all this stuff, could you just briefly in a nutshell tell us what the healthy protocol is so that we don't need to get into that system? What is the Hippocrates protocol well, over there? Well, not one. The Hippocrates protocol is a, is a historic biblical protocol and a Buddhist protocol and a Hindu protocol because on the first page of every one of those great theologies, they tell you to live this way. That's right. Uh, you live from the earth. You consume from the earth. And in a Judeo-Christian theology, they said when we screwed up, when we sinned, that's when we started to eat animals, and we started mm -hmm. to drink milk from the bosoms of other species. And it's become such a common practice that you seem as if you're the oddball when you choose not to do absurd and insane things. Right. So our protocol is organic, it's plant-based, it's one that honors the body, and everything we do here has one objective, to strengthen and support the body's immune system, to teach people self-respect, to get people to honor and understand the gift life is, to literally afford them non-invasive treatments and therapies if they're sick enough, to expedite that healing process. And most important, what we do here at the Institute, and it's been most effective, is educate people. When we educate you, we make it so you don't need me anymore. Right. That should be the future of health. It will be the future of healthcare. That's right. If Hippocrates would fail, under my opinion as director, if I don't get you to be independent. You sitting there interviewing me today shows that you got the lesson. I got it. As a student came here, now you're the teacher. And that's what we want here. We want that. And we want every person to understand that nothing is insurmountable. If, right. if a doctor or a professional has limitations, says there's nothing more that can be done, but they should preface it with nothing more I know what to do. That's right. And as you've talked so much about, and I've read in my studies at Hippocrates and elsewhere, so many of these extreme catastrophic cancers and diseases have a zero percent survival rate by Western medicine. I, I think fourth stage breast cancer, um, so many of them, zero percent, zero percent survival success rate from chemo and Western medicine. And the success rate at Hippocrates is through the roof. It's so, through the roof. so we're sitting here speaking now. It's uh, three days before the end of this year. And in-house, so you know, we have seven people that have reversed stage four diseases right now. In-house. As you know, 80% of our, uh, our alumni, guests who have been here, come back. And it's such a privilege and an honor. You know, just the last week I received uh, from a Jewish girl, by the way, who came here three years ago. That's just a decoration. Uh, yeah, a Christmas, a Christmas <laughs> ornament. And on it it said, thank you, Hippocrates. Oh. And three years ago she came here and was told she was going to die of advanced breast cancer. And she said, this is my three-year anniversary. So last week, uh, the day after Christmas, I received, and I wrote her back and said, we're putting this ornament permanently on the Hippocrates tree. Now, it's not magic. This takes hard work. And is it for everyone? Yes, this is for yes. everyone. But is yes. everyone willing to do what it takes? No. People are still sitting back in their chair, waiting for somebody to make them well with a magic wand. That's right. And it, don't come here. I'm not interested in you coming here. Yep. I'm interested in people coming here who take themselves serious and take life serious and honor and respect. You know, many people say they have faith. They're full of shit. That's right. They, faith, they, they could heal themselves. And it's that's... A lack of that's what I love about you. You say it like it is. Jersey, New York. We need more Jersey, New York leaders in the health world like you, Brian. 
Seriously, (laughs) full of crap. And actually, speaking of full of crap, like you just said, this protocol works for everyone. What do you say to the people who are so hung up on, oh, my blood type, I'm eating for my blood type, Atkins, ketogenic, uh, there's the starch solution diet, Pritikin. What do you say to all these different diets that people claim is for their blood type? Here's what I'll say in general, that there are many people who have... uh, a passion to present what they believe right. <laughs> and many times those people yeah, many times those people are well equipped and well experienced and knowledgeable and come from a not only a theological but also a scientific basis so what they're offering you can't completely denounce but then there's institutes like this that, that founded the alternative health field that before there was an alternative health field, a holistic health field for anyone new anything that we're talking about today. This founder of ours opened the Institute and recognized uh, what could happen with catastrophic disease if you just take responsibility. So we've been doing clinical research with humans, not on computers, not with a website where I give you philosophy of other people's research. Every day I'm working with people. And from that, we've gathered 60 years of data on hundreds of thousands of people. And so over the years, we've improved, we've changed. We look at research that's out there. We apply things. Just today, I sat here one hour ago with the dentist, and the dentist taught me something, and I gave her a big hug, and I said, my God, bless, bless you, because I'm going to now change the way I speak about this particular type of dentistry. And she sat with me. She was courageous enough to challenge what I said, come in with the computer program and show me where I was wrong, And that's what you need to do. So everyone is not ready to come to Mecca, as we say. Not everyone's ready to come to the top of the mountain. We're at the top of the mountain. And someday, hopefully, you keep walking. You keep getting there. So I'm not going to denounce or condemn anyone for trying other things. But if you get stuck in a rut, which you will in many of these programs, uh, remember, we're always here waiting for you, welcoming you, and not not making fun of you. To help you heal. I I was a macro-neurotic I was a vegan, I was a vegetarian, I was a schmo, I mean, everything you could be, I was. <laughs> oh man, thank God you came to Mecca because we need you. That's, that's awesome. I mean, why, where do you think people, why do you think that they, like, obviously it's heavy metals and what they're eating and everything, but honestly, like, something has happened where logical reasoning has failed. Like, people just are not listening to their own logical reasoning. They're not questioning anything. They're just believing what they're spoon-fed in school, fake science, um, like fake education. Can you talk a little bit about that, checkbook science? What's going on right now? Well, this is, this is a, a large subject, so I'll try to be as concise as I can be. Uh, number one, we are programmed. Uh, I used to think education in great part was to make me think. And then I recognized by the time I was in high school, it was teaching me to conform, not making me think. And every once in a while, I would have a wonderful teacher or professor that really challenged the student and provoked our own thoughts and honored and respected those thoughts, maybe agreed or maybe didn't disagree. That's what education should be. Yes. Uh, We already talked about the corporate influence and how they control the media, how they control advertising, how they control education, literally pay for book. Uh, books so that they can put their own contamination in the books. So that's all why we are like that. Plus that, when people get, you said something, and I'll elaborate on that. We are so filled with heavy metals, chemicals, not only the ones that are usual suspects in the air, in the water, in the clothes we wear, but also the ones that you may be very, very uh, shocked to understand. In most of the commercial foods now, big, large, multinational food companies, they intentionally put synthetic opiates. Yep. And let me repeat this so that the listeners get what I just said to you. Major food companies, fast food companies, cookie companies, chip companies, put synthetic opiates in their food. So people are further addicted, further reduced in consciousness, and more. you're more able, if you're the power broker, to control and manipulate people. Yeah. So it's, it's drugging, it's propagandizing, it's brainwashing, 
and it's lethargy, weakness, and sickness. Yeah. It's much easier for me to go along with the program and not challenge anyone and just be at peace, supposedly, than to stand up and want to know the truth. Most people are living in our society, and I mean 92 to 94 percent of people, with their head below the water. They're actually drowning. They're dying at this point. To pop your head above the water is difficult. Now, you, have, you see the sun, you see many other things that you don't see, and not everyone wants to do that, sadly. I think everyone should do that. What we do here every single week, 52 weeks a year, is drag people up out of the water and let them see things, make them see things. Yeah. And if you do that, then you have a fighting chance to know what life's about and the joy of life. Amen. Thank God. Yeah, okay, so we've covered, here, here's something that's going to keep people uh, watching if they, you know, if they're still here with us. Libido, you wrote the book about it. Oh, How can people increase, book to where is I that book? Experimenting. Where is that book? I have that book. It's on this table somewhere. Have you been, have you, when you're going out on dates, do you bring that and show it to the oh, boyfriend? Oh, it's what? the boyfriend. My, it's on our, it's on our side table. Are you, you kidding? Look at that. Seven keys. Seven to keys. Sexual vitality. The expert right here, PhD doctor Brian, Doctor Brian Clement. Sex doctor. Sex doctor. Like doctor Ruth. That's right. Like I you. met I met many yes. many people, Doctor Ruth. But you don't eat fish, so you're not transgender. Oh no no no. That's no, another no. conversation. <laughs> Read Brian's book, Killer Fish. It'll tell you all about all this epidemic that's going on, where fish are literally becoming. They are transgender. Yes, they are. Okay. Yes, they are. We are what we eat. If we think and that... Can you imagine if these fish lived in North Carolina? Oh, my God. <laughs> that would change the, the world. <laughs> <laughs> that would ch we need to get them down to the south so we can become a much more open, loving, accepting That's world. Right. We need to pull them from the Potomac, where every fish pulled out of the Potomac in mm -hmm. D.C., our, our nation's capital, is transgender, and yes. haul them down to Mississippi so that Bubba can eat a few, and That's we can become right. a lot more liberal and accepting right. of all people. <laughs> Okay, there's my plan. There's my big plan. See, we can use this crazy, toxic world to our advantage. Yes. I'm an yes, idealist. It's true. I'm an it's idealist. True. But, yeah, could you please talk a little bit about how to increase libido? Because I get that question asked a lot on my website. Yeah. The, the most important thing that people should understand is how pervasive uh, libido lack is for both males and females. Right. I mean, in our book, we re report uh, data and statistics from around the globe that you're part of the species, women. Uh, a high percentage of you actually have to fake orgasm. And why you have to is because you're not sensitized. 40-year-old uh, young men in North America and most of Europe, 50% uh, cannot sexually perform. I didn't say 70-year-old men. I said 40-year-old young men. Yeah. Now, all of this comes as one a result or from one result and that's our capillaries are blocked with usually animal fats lack of circulation from lack of exercise and movement and when blood flow doesn't get to your genitalia Betsy and Tom go dead it's that simple that's right and when Betsy and Tom go dead you have no sensitivity so we see it here all the time so people come here as you know who are healthy like you half the people that come here want to maintain youth, want to maintain sexiness, want to maintain beauty. The other half are fighting some kind of a disease, some serious disease, some minor disease. But when we work with these people, one of the things we always hear almost on a regular daily basis is how their libido comes back. Yep. So the same, the same thing that helps the heart and helps the brain also helps the genitalia. Now, why I wrote that book along with Anna Maria is I had a really good Catholic upbringing. <laughs> I think part of the book that I think is important is to talk about the psychological uh, yeah. absolute fanaticism that surrounds sex. Yeah. And as I point out, is the one drive that makes you and I think and move and be motivated and throughout our life until the day we're 120 and die is sex hormones. It is biology that we cannot deny it. We can try to suppress it. We can do everything in our power so that it doesn't surface. But the truth is, it is a natural, normal biological function to desire intimacy. Now, I'm not saying running around having you know 20 sex partners, although it sounds fun, <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, we're talking about intimate 
committed relationships. Yeah. Now, with that said, can you imagine what happens to you as a little girl under the suppression of fanaticism and zealot religious ideology or some kind of a crazy cultural weirdness or me as a boy? Uh, and I'll give you my story. When I was a little boy, I was six years old and I was being taught by the nuns. You ever see the nuns? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's scary. They wear these habits and all this. You did everything they said because you said, shit, who are they? <laughs> None would, would be looming over the class and looming over my desk. Oh. And she said, you know, murder is horrible, but equally bad is homosexuality. I said, well, I didn't know what a homosexual was. So when I'm nine, I finally asked my mother, am I a homosexual? She says, I don't know. We hope not. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. Well, when I'm 12, I figured out about what a homosexual is. And then I started to realize something had to be really wrong with this picture. How could that be as bad as murder? Right. So just to show you this craziness, the other thing I was told yeah. is never kiss or touch a girl from the other religion, any other religion. But, but listen what happened to me if I touched a girl from the other and kissed her. The earth would open up, I would fall in, remember the word, they used gobbled up and burned to death. Don't you know the first girl I fall in love with at around 12, 13 was a Protestant. <laughs> to show you how powerful biology is. I didn't give a shit if I burned. I was going to get one kiss. <laughs> That's right. I think that day I went cross-eyed. I remember kissing her so fast she didn't know I was kissing her. And my one eye's on the ground. And I said, shit, I'm going to take the second kiss. I didn't go under the ground yet. Can you imagine putting this into a child's head? I can't. I can't imagine putting everything we put into children's heads. I have this debate with my boyfriend all the time. I'm 40. I have yet to breed. Okay? I am... No, I'm not going to say I'm scared to bring kids into this world. I want to because I want to have healthy, vegan, enlightened children that think for themselves. I think this world needs more of that population. But we're... I'm still looking for our community. Yeah, I'm still looking for my own private Hippocrates, like logical, practical, reasonable. And another thing that Hippocrates espouses is, like you talked about, emotional and spiritual wellness. That is a huge part of the Hippocrates protocol. Not just sprouts, wheatgrass, which I hope we'll talk about a little bit. Sprouts. Have you read my newest book? Which one? I haven't read it. I need Emo to wear it. Spirit. Which Emo one? Spirit. Oh my gosh. Okay, everybody go to the Hippocrates website, go to the Hippocrates store and shop. Go get all of Brian's books. They're all incredible empirical evidence. For all of you doctors and scientists that constantly challenge me about how to bring yourselves back to life, not chemo, not therapy, not biopsies, not mammograms, all these things cause cancer, spread yes. cancer. <laughs> read Brian's books, read the 60 plus years of empirical scientific evidence that Hippocrates has compiled from their human, not rat, not pig, not <laughs> monkeys, not goat studies. Human studies where people have completely come back to life when the Western medical, I'll say establishment to be nice, has thrown in the towel after almost radiating them half to death. So there's my little bit of soapbox. You don't have to say it. I'll say it. But anyway, that, that's another video. You on the next tour with me. Uh, oh, I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm on board. See you in Seattle. Come on down. But no, I mean, obviously, so all disease like we've talked about, thank you for the libido talk. We all needed that one. Um, can I throw a Who few? Who doesn't like to talk about sex? Who doesn't like to talk about that? Let's keep our, <laughs> our viewers entertained in between the medical establishment and the government and trying to control us. And our, we've got to talk about something enlightening that everybody needs to know about. So thank you. Um, but so what about the fact that all disease besides being emotional and spiritual happens in the gut? Could you talk a little bit about that? Well, this is finally, finally, in some of the enlightened people, even in mainstream medicine, coming to light. Thank God. Where we know that 70% of your immune system is born and created in the intestinal tract. Now, can you imagine that? Now, remember, it's your immune system. When you and I are sitting here breathing and healthy, it's our immune system that allows that to happen. If we reduced our immune system by 20%, we would get sick. By 40 or 50 percent, we would die of catastrophic disease. Right. So 70 percent of that comes from your intestinal tract. Now, why do you think one of the many pathways today for catastrophic sickness is becoming so pervasive? Simply look at the, what we're doing. We're taking more chemicals, more heavy metals, not eating food, eating sugar, not eating at all. Yeah. 
drinking water that has fluoride in, in it and, and chlorine in it and heavy metals in it and plastics in it and pharmaceutical drugs in it. Yeah. Uh, the list goes on. So we've, we've destroyed the very bacteria that spawn immune system cells. Right. Now, uh, when that is combined with the heavy metal, with the chemical that your body perceives as estrogen, cancers start to grow. Yes. Cysts start to grow. Fibroids start to grow. Endometriosis starts to grow. If you're unfortunate, that becomes cancer. A little more fortunate, it may be a heart problem, maybe clogged arteries. A little more fortunate, maybe type 2 diabetes. Now, cancer is over 50% of the population going to contract it. Uh, by the time you're my age, love, it's going to be 65% yep. of the population. And it's now being talked about in the medical realm as a chronic disease rather than a catastrophic disease. Not that they're making headway in keeping people alive because the data and statistics doesn't prove that. That's right. Uh, same death rate, if not a higher death rate, than it was a generation ago. That's right. But the fact is that so many people have it, rather than frighten you and say this is catastrophic, they'd rather soft pedal you and tell you there's something that can be done. And you articulated about 22 minutes ago that literally what we have is a world where they have zero success rate with some treatments for cancer, but they still treat you. Yep. Because it's an incredibly lucrative business to be in. Yep. Lucrative business. And, and I don't think the doctor is always the bad guy. I think that the doctor says, well, this is what I know how to do. This is the tools and I'm trying to help the person. All they have to do is see if the person shows up a month or two or three later uh, from that. And then they may say, well, wait a minute. Maybe what I did didn't really work at that point. Let me try something else. Because doctors get paid per procedure, per... per per pharmaceutical uh, prescription. They don't get salaries, okay? So wake up, people. I just, people just don't know these things, so I'm glad we're talking about it. People just don't know. There's so much misinformation. There's so much ignorance going on. They just don't know. Doctors do not get salaries. I love the idea in the villages in ancient China where the doctor of the village would only get paid if every single person in the village was well. If one person in the village was sick, that doctor would not get his salary. So we should go back to that. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, with you. I know you are. That's why I'm promoting Hippocrates and love it, and it changed my entire life, thank God. So, yeah, people, start getting your enemas and colonics and cleaning your gut because that's where all of your serotonin, dopamine, neurotransmitters are. You want to feel great. You want to be great. You don't want depression. Clean your gut, okay? And you there's heard a it new field first. of psychiatry now, mainstream medical doctors, a handful, not many, a fraction of a percent, that have stopped giving psychiatric medicines and use bacteria and proteins. Awesome. So, so it's awesome. Going to be the it's going to be the future. Uh, thank God. And it was in the past. So I'm glad we're coming back oh. to it. Yeah, Edward Howell, uh, enzymes. I'm mean, a huge part of Hippocrates Protocol, enzymes. Can you talk a little bit about enzymes? Well, your body is electric. When I look at you, I'm actually looking at electric. We think of it, you know, as chemistry and everything else. <laughs> but it's not voodoo electric. I guess it's measurable electric. That's cool. Every cell in your body is 75 hertz. When those cells come together and they make a heart or an organ, a liver, a brain, whatever it would be, they're gatherings of hertz. And again, the heart and the brain have the two most electromagnetic fields. Now, an enzyme is inherently and naturally found and consumed from raw food that's plant-based. Mm -hmm. You don't have enzymes that are usable in the dead animal that's right. or milk of an animal. You have enzymes in raw, fresh food. So your electric body requires enzymes to keep the electric going. More important than anything else. The most important nutrient we're discovering right now, on um, elementally, it's oxygen. Electromagnetic is for as far as the body goes. And if, in fact... You don't get enzymes in your body, you're slowly aging. Now, the way you mentioned Dr. Hal, who was the leader in this field, he said to us almost a century ago, when you're born, you have all the enzymes you need to live well beyond a century. Wow. If we keep eating foods with enzymes, we keep replenishing it, just like putting gasoline in the car. If you're not eating that, if everything you eat is cooked, even plant-based, but cooked. Yeah. And slowly... It's a deficit. Your bank account runs out, and wow. you end up aging prematurely, getting sick, and getting weak. Plus, you're not as vibrant. 
You right. gotta be vital. You gotta have enzymes. That's right. <laughs> Take your eat your living foods, people. Drink them, eat them. What are some of the main foods that you recommend and eat for enzymes and to be sprouts, vibrant and alive sprouts, like you are? Sprouts are at the top of the list. Fresh algae are at the top of the list. And fresh out of a garden, you know. Uh, all over the world, more and more people are growing organic gardens. Yay. Get it out. Don't let it sit for three days in your refrigerator. Eat it when the life is at the highest amount. That's right. Okay, I love that. Thank you. And what about wheatgrass? I know that's a huge well, part of the protocol. Wheatgrass is what we're known for. You know, that's right. Back to the world. and Wheatgrass has so many attributes. We know how it helps to kill and prevent cancers and viruses and bacteria and mold. We know that it's like injecting blood into your body. We know it brings oxygen and enzymes into your body. And we know that two ounces is equivalent to five pounds of organic green vegetables. Wow. So what else do we have? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. That's and amazing. We drink it this way and we put it up to schnauze and we rub <laughs> it on our body. We have a lot of fun with wheatgrass. We have like, you know, New Year's Eve here, we're going to have a wheatgrass party. Oh my gosh, I wish I could come so next year. We're going to do wheatgrass party. Oh man, I'm dog sitting, but in honor of your wheatgrass party, I will give the dogs some wheatgrass because they love it. In honor. I give my dog wheatgrass and chlorella tablets every single day that I got from Hippocrates, no less. The best irradiated, highest quality, organic, non-GMO heirloom seeds and sprouts and products that you can ever find. Little plug, Hippocrates store, scientific evidence, uh, no heavy metals, amazing products. Go shop there. Um, okay, so. Here's what we want to you, know, you said something that people may, even if they don't eat well, even if they're addicted to food, they may have a dog or a cat. Notice what your dog and cat do when they're not feeling well. Yep. They don't eat the canned food, the dried food. You get. They go out and eat grass. That's right. That's right. That's right. And my dog eats it just to eat it. Like she knows. She's obviously on raw food and I, I give her algae every day. I mean, she's the healthiest dog. People comment at the dog park. That's another video. I'll send it to you. But that's another video, my dog health dog video. Look healthy, my dog doesn't look and say, what do you do for your dog? Yeah, I got raw like food, that. lots of exercise, fresh air, don't have her on a leash, let her be, have freedom, unlike these factory animals. We are what we eat, you know? My dog is what she eats. She eats local, organic, uh, oh my gosh, it's horrible. It's God's joke on me. Like the vegan, the vegan activist here with this carnivorous, carcass munching dog who goes out and hunts squirrels. Good times. Yeah, it's a it's joke. okay, you know, we, we, we don't have to dislike carnivores. <laughs> no. Uh, we can just like dislike humans who think they're carnivores. Right. Exactly. <laughs> we are, or just have empathy for them because they've been so sorely miseducated. We are herbivores. You heard it here first. You can watch my protein video about it. We are herbivores. Thank you, Dr. Clement, for reiterating that. Amen. Okay, you know, so here's... Years ago, around the holidays, they had, we are the world. Yes, of I course. I think you and I, next, next holiday season, <laughs> we have to get all the famous people together we can. Do we are herbivores? Yes! We are herbivores. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm wearing green. I'm ready. I, my, my organic, 100% cotton organic green. Here I go. I'm ready. That's it. That's right. That's, it. That's Even right. That, see, we'll talk about those clothes you wear. Yeah. Go ahead. Talk about okay. You don't even know that Wait, that's bad for you. This interview is you. Okay. Well, from what I learned from Brian Clement's book, Dr. Clement's book, um, Killer Clothes, is that what we put on our skin, which is our biggest organ, it goes through our skin straight into our bloodstream, and our blood pumps that those toxins, formaldehyde, which is in all non-organic cotton, um, poly fibers, which basically is pouring gasoline on your body every day, um, heavy metals, lead, whatever else these colors, these dyes are made from, go straight through your biggest organ into your bloodstream and pump throughout all of your organs. So that is you're one a thing. You're student, I'm telling you. You're one of thank the best you. students I've ever had. Oh my gosh, thank you. Well, <laughs> Hippocrates is the best program I've ever been through, and I'm an overachiever like yourself, and I've been through a lot of programs. And I've apprenticed with a lot of experts, and a lot of healers, and Hippocrates blew me out of the water in a big way. I learned more there than I've learned in my 20 years obsessing about this topic. So thank you for having that program. Everyone should go through that program, the Health Educator Program, or bare minimum, the Life Transformation Program. You don't know how amazing you can feel because you've never felt this way, I guarantee. You know, never. we're starting a brand new program next week on weight loss. It's going to be the Weight Transformation Program. 
Amazing. I wish I knew about that 46 years ago. Um, it, well, whatever you did worked. You didn't even need the specific program because you awakened and your logical reasoning prevailed and it worked. So proof is in the pudding. Thank you. Now you're going to share it with others. Awesome. Great. I'll promote that one too. Can't wait. Right. I'll get the info. You, you must know. Look, at, out where you live, there's a lot of chubby people I know. Definitely. Well, <laughs> yes. I mean, it is Seattle, you know, back when I was in it. But yes, yes. It's still California and West Coast. I mean, I'm back and forth. West Coast is a little bit more conscious, but yeah, there are a lot of chubby people. And I can tend to be one of them when I'm overdoing it. So I need to get back to Hippocrates and go to that program. So thank you for that heads up. Um, uh, but speak what, you have to, what you have to do is you have to tell all the chubby people <laughs> that they have to love the heart inside of them and kiss their heart and come back to life. Amen. And that's the beauty of Hippocrates is that's what they promote above all else. If you're not in it spiritually and emotionally from a place of self-love, it probably won't work. But I've only seen it work. I've only seen your protocol work for the hundreds and hundreds of people I, I personally witnessed transform in the three months that I was there. Um, and speaking of which, speaking of these insane catastrophic diseases, can you live without being poked and prodded like biopsied and chemoed and surgically removed? Can you live your entire life with, say, cancer or fibroids or tumors or whatever? Surely, surely you can. And I think the way to rephrase that is the medical faculty has floated a term cure. There's really no such thing as cure. Whatever the disorder you have, you can put into remission. Right. Meaning the cancer, the immune system beats it up, puts it into a closet. The heart disease goes away. But you have to be vigilant. You have to watch that you don't go back to the lifestyle, the cause that created the cancer, the heart disease, the, the diabetes. Right. So sure, you can live throughout life. Uh, for instance, I was having this conversation with two medical colleagues the other day where we were saying, how many people do we know, both are plant-based physicians, uh, yeah. how many people do we know that still have the tumor there 20, 30, 40 years later but have no cancer? So even the scar tissue uh, is, is left behind, but the cancer drains out when your body beats it up. That's right. I love it. And I love that story you tell. I don't know if you want to share it with us now about the Japanese elders on the train. Oh, yeah. Well, that one we'll leave for later. Okay, that's the next, <laughs> next video. Next video. Stay tuned. It's an amazing story. Um, I, and can we just talk about some of these crazy, very preventable and healable diseases, such as starting with, what about autism? Autism is something that we're working an awful lot with, and we should, uh, since it is a catastrophic disease. It's growing, and it, it's one out of 37 now yeah. in the United States. Uh, I talked to a medical doctor right here in this office yesterday who's in our program. He said when he became a medical doctor, he's a bit older than me, he said it was one out of 100,000. Uh, wow. Back in 1980, when I became director, it was one out of 10,000. Wow. And let me repeat, it's one out of 37. Wow. If you live in the state of New Jersey, it's one out of 26. Oy. Uh, and so we anticipate 50% of the children born in the next few years will be born with some level of autism. We now know that ADD is autism. Of course. We know that dyslexia is autism. And much of this has been around, but it, it's not crippling as typical autism is. Now, we have done programs on autism. You may want to get on YouTube and look at them. And one of the nights we brought in three mothers that reversed autism in their children on this program. That's right. So can it be done? Yes. Can it be done every time? No. Can every one of the autistic children I've ever worked with in the years I've done this improve? Absolutely. 100%. So the worst thing that happens, they're going to improve. The best thing that can happen as these mothers, you can see, they completely reverse autism. Yep. And What's sad to me is we invite in, you know, we do these programs totally gratis and for free to try to educate the medical community and local community and parents. We have such resistance from the autistic community that they don't even want to know ways that their children can improve. They're so bought into believing that this is so horrible that there's nothing that can be done. They don't even want to see that there's a possibility for this. And again, that's brainwashing. That's totally. systematic brainwashing the public. Uh, the sad news is that there's no disease I've ever worked with that doesn't have a possibility of being reversed and put into remission. Not one. Let's look at heart disease. It's a joke. 
Totally. Heart disease is a lifestyle choice. 3% or so is a, a valve that's broken. Diabetes type 2 is 100% a choice. It's a lifestyle choice. Uh, they are not catastrophic long-term diseases, chronic diseases. These are correctable diseases. Uh, why do we know that? Hippocrates has shown that, but so have some of my colleagues. Look at Dr. Esselstyn's work. Look at Dr. McDougall's work. Yep. Uh, look at the work of, of uh, uh, Dean Arnish. Yep. First one that did it back in 1990. I mean, look at the work of Carl es uh, Esselstyn, Dr. Esselstyn. I mean, it, it, it's just endless. And we're getting almost 100% success by just putting people on healthy diets and having them exercise. But now, show me 100% success in people who don't change their lifestyle. How many bypasses do they have before they die? Yeah. How many strokes do they have to have? How many heart attacks do they have to endure? How much does their family have to suffer? How much does the economy of this country and the world have to collapse under this? Yep. I mean, so I mean, it is so unbelievable. Uh, it, it never stops upsetting me, let's put it that way. I wouldn't say it angers me anymore. It upsets me. It upsets me that people aren't uh, congruent or aware of how easy these things are to correct. Well, I'll talk about uh, vaccines in, in another video with Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who's coming on the show soon. So you're yeah. you're free. Say hello to him. You're off the hook with that one. But yeah. but yes, uh, autism, heavy metals, chelated, uh, get healthy, completely healable, curable. From my experience and from what I've seen at Hippocrates as well. Um, could you please talk a little bit about fruit and how fruit feeds cancer and other diseases? Uh, a long time ago near three and a half, four decades ago, we recognized by chance that fruit sugar, fruits were feeding cancer. And fruit sugars are not only in fruits, they're in carrot juice, they're in beet juice, etc. which is ironic since we think of that as a healthy food when people have cancer. Now, we were sort of a lone voice in that until maybe 10 years ago. And now there's a chorus of top worldwide researchers, uh, including Stanford University, University of California, German Cancer Institute, Huntsman uh, Institute, and the list goes on, yeah. that literally show the same thing we've been working with for three and a half decades here. That when you put sugar into the body, now all sugars do this, but fruit sugars equally do it, that it actually grows the cancer, but it also grows viruses and bacteria, molds and yeast and fungus, but it grows cancer. Now the most well-researched voice on this now is a colleague and friend of mine, Dr. Thomas Seifried. Dr. Seifried was at Yale, now he's at Boston College. He wrote the definitive book on cancer. As a matter of fact, if any doctor is listening to us now and haven't, haven't read Seifried's book, Cancer is the Metabolic Disease, shame on you. Because you're going to see patients, half the population has cancer or more. Yeah. So read his book. I had him come here, we had a major medical conference three years ago here. And I picked only cutting-edge researchers, seven of them, wow. and brought them together. And these are all people who were being scrutinized by their own peers, their own colleagues, by the pharmaceutical industry, because they're out of the box. They're not saying, take a drug, get well. They're saying, diets change you. And cancer's not a, a genetic disease. And Dr. Seifrey sat right with me here for three and a half hours and explained to me his decades of research, and here's why fruit sugar feeds cancer. And he taught me things I wasn't aware of. And he explained to me that fruit, all fruit and fruit sugar, acts like and metabolizes like fat in the body. Wow. No other sugar does it. If we wow. eat sugar, honey, maple syrup, agave syrup, white sugar, it will make you and I fat, but it doesn't metabolize like fat. Wow. Metabolizes like fat, it reduces oxygen. He's now reconfirmed what Warburg showed us in 1924 and won the Nobel Prize for in 1931. That if you reduce oxygen by one-third in the human body, even I would start to manifest more cancer. Yep, that's right. So imagine that. And, and it's the very thing we think is natural, sadly is not. Now, why is that so? Uh, I actually think diet, the original diet of man was in great part fruit and herbs. Mostly fruit, uh, but we started to hybrid fruit thousands of years ago, and hybridization created more and more and more and more sugar. Mm -hmm. So as you know, you've heard me speak, and in my book, Sweet Disease, I articulate this. Amazing book. Yeah, uh, that the average mm -hmm. fruit today has 30 times, three zero times more sugar than the original fruit. 
my favorite apple 50 times more. And so think about that. So now we're putting astronomical amounts of sugar in, feeding the cancer, viruses, mold, yeast, fungus, also now reducing oxygen and increasing anaerobic cancer growth. Unbelievable. Totally believable because it makes perfect sense. That's right. When you decrease oxygen, you will start to die. An oxygenated now, other, body. Other people may have theories out there, love. We don't have a theory. We've been doing this for over 35 years. That's right. So when we, remember, we used to give a lot of fruit to people. Yeah. When I took the fruit out, I immediately saw a shift in people improving and getting better and yeah. staying better. Was that E.D. So May? So, so somebody who would like to debate me how fruit was the original diet, and it's a wonderful thing, he said, debate me, because 35 years we've been watching what happens when you take the fruit out. Well, Not only with cancer. look how good Brian looks. He's 95. Look how amazing he <laughs> looks. I feel no, like just me. kidding. <laughs> he looks amazing for being in his 60s. The fruitarians I know, God bless my friends that are fruitarians, old, wrinkly, withered, skeletal glasses. Most of my fruitarian friends wear glasses. And the fruitarians I know who've promoted a fruitarian diet that I've watched over the years, they don't look well. Their skin is gray and ashen. It's almost as if they're eating meat. It's crazy. Well, I mean, you know, one thing that's destroyed when we get vaccinated is our pancreas. So we can't even really digest fruit sugar anymore anyway. But I rarely ever eat fruit. Ever, ever. You being one of our students and being one of the better ones, uh, you had to read my academic books. And in my academic books, as you recall, I have a chapter on how fruit, yeah, well, fruit that's ages just, you. Yeah. Fruit ages you more than any other food we ingest. For so sure. you want to get old, just like you said, and you're correct. All these fruit pushers all look like they're 20 years older than they should be. Crazy. And, and, well, I ate a lot of fruit when I started. It was a lot of fun. I, I didn't have to give up sugar. I just ate... Lots and lots of fruit at that point. Yeah. I have empathy. Hey, we're all addicts. I'm an addict. I went to 12 steps when I was 20 and bulimic and going crazy from the sad American diet. I got a sponsor and worked the 12 steps in an Overeaters Anonymous type of program. So I, I was a full-on addict. Well, good for me, but I, I mean, I was an addict. So I get it, and I have empathy for people who want the quick fix, and they want to just get 25 surgeries and stints and, you know, ha live with diabetes and inject themselves every day with insulin and have inflammation and not be able to do yoga their whole lives. It's an addiction. I get it. Life's better but, without it. But get over it. You get it, but get over get it. Get over it. I get it, but get over it. I got over it. I'm having the best life ever. Brian got over it. He's having the best life ever. And we're able to help people. That's the joy. That's the rewarding part of life. It is turns me on. That me too. Me on. Kindred spirits, people. Get over your addictions and help others. Read a story about it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask you about a few more diseases and then a few more healing things, and then you're off the hook. Okay. Oh. You're off the hook. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, what do you say about parents who willingly rush their kids to the hospital to get their tonsils removed or their appendix removed or even wisdom teeth pulled I mean what is this craziness well, I, I, again it's a lack of knowledge and fear uh, and so as a parent look at out of all the work I've done in my life you know I you can get accolades and it's wonderful but the most important job I ever had is being a parent there's no question being a parent is the thing I love the most I'm still learning after four children and one's almost 40 I'm learning now to be a grandfather. I have seven Whoa. children. Wow. But the, the reality is, uh, take this as a serious, serious role. And you're here to perpetuate the human race. And so it's your responsibility as a parent to learn something before you rush and do something that may be wrong and may be catastrophic and may hurt somebody. Uh, we see it with our brothers. My wife is Swedish. Her brother in Sweden does the same thing. This is not only an American phenomenon, that they're so frightened, so shallow, so out of touch and not, not knowing what to do, they immediately rush to the emergency room for nonsense, for nothing. Now, let's look at my generation. The hysterectomies of those days were tonsillectomies. It was a way doctors made a lot of money and sustained. Mm -hmm. Tonsils have a place in your body. They weren't supposed to be taken out. Right. They're supposed to protect the, my, my body from what comes in through my nose when I breathe and what I breathe through my mouth and what I consume. So all the microbes that are coming in, if I don't have a tonsil, I end up with more sickness, more sore throats, etc. The appendix 
God didn't make a mistake making the appendix. It lubricates the large intestine. It's supposed to be there. If it gets inflected because it's in the worst place you could possibly have, the back of the intestinal tract, what do they do? They cut it out. It's the gallbladder. We're not supposed to have a gallbladder that regulates fat. You know, and, and I think, you know, I'm not here to only badmouth modern medicine. Sometimes people have made bad choices, as I did for the first part of my life. And so you need surgery. You need surgery. And so thank God today we can do that. We can take these things out if they're exploding and making you septic. But that shouldn't be a normal thing. It shouldn't be a normal thing. You get fat like I used to be, and you get liposuction. It shouldn't be a normal thing. It should be that you've got to take your responsibility in your life. You've got to make life precious, and you've got to love life. And if you don't, you might as well die. Don't get liposuction. Die. Yeah. Because you'd probably be happier. Definitely. Yeah. Totally. And then the, the sinus surgery. Everybody's getting this sinus surgery. Yeah. I mean, we know for sure from the Mayo Clinic studies that the surgeries really don't work, that there are some laser treatments that may work, and that this is deep tissue infection that goes back sometimes for, for years that a person has. Uh, if you just clean up your diet, most sinus problems come from the consumption of dairy, uh, the consumption of wheat and, and other flour products. And so if you just got rid of those, most likely 60 to 70 percent of people wouldn't have sinus problems. If you just put a little silver in your nose periodically, and clean, as I do on planes, so I don't get infection from the recycled dirty air that's going through, you probably wouldn't get as much sinus infections. And, you know, there's simple, practical things that maybe our grandmothers do, we forgot. Well, you'll remember all of it when you look at Hippocrates' website and Google all of Brian Clement's videos, Dr. Brian Clement, Anna Maria Clement. Uh, Google Dr. Brian Clement. Watch all of his videos. It is truly an education. Read this book. This is the first Bible that you need for your health, Hippocrates Health Program, a proven guide to healthful living. It has everything you need to know about the Hippocrates Protocol. I've read almost all of your books. I can't wait to read your latest one about spirit. And I mean, I honestly, Brian, I just thank you. You're truly the first person I've ever encountered in this movement who's given me the courage and who's made me feel like I have a, a kindred enthusiastic extremist spirit and I'm not like cuckoo for wanting to be healthy and spread the good word so I mean I'm just you're cuckoo. You're maybe I am but you know maybe I am but hey you're you're really a breath of fresh air the first person who came along where I was like wow Th that guy, I'm, I'm like that guy. I'm a female and not from eating fish. I'm naturally female like that guy. And I, I want the same thing for everybody that you do. Vibrance, health, it'll just make my life more beautiful. Everybody, the world will just be more harmonic. And I just thank you for the amazing, incredible healing and inspirational work you're doing with your life. You're really, you're living your PP, Brian. Uh, you know, Personal PP, passion, purpose. Yeah, <laughs> you're living it. You're embodying it. You're so amazing. I would love to have you again here on Humor Healing Humanities Humanitarian Chronicles. I know this wasn't well. It is funny. It's always funny with Brian because he's naturally funny. He's from New York. What do you expect? It's in his DNA. <laughs> it's in the water in Jersey over there. Aside from the mercury and fluoride, it's it's you know the humor. But no, thank you so much for being here. And do you want to tell people how to get a hold of Hippocrates and learn more? Sure, sure. Well, thanks for having me on. We'll come back again. We'll have more fun in the future. Yay! And uh, just get on the web, most of you. It's HippocratesInst.org. I'll spell it for you. Most people have heard about Hippocrates, but they don't know how to spell it. I had to work here three years to figure this spelling out. <laughs> H-I-P-P, -P, like hip, H-I-P-P-O-C-R-A-T-E-S. Hippocrates, H-I-P-P-O-C-R-A-T-E-S, I-N-S-T, meaning institute, all one word, HippocratesInst.org, we're a nonprofit, so it's .org. That's right. And then, of course, you can call us, uh, it's 561-471-8876, I'll say it again, 561-471-8876. Love yourself, take care of your health, and also go to the truth about health dot org. Or no, dot com. Dot com. Truth about the real health. Truth, the real truth about health dot com. The real truth about health dot com. 
You are incredible. Brian, thank you for your constant inspiration, life force, vitality, and helping so many of us humanoids get to back to the garden. You're amazing, and I can't wait to talk to you soon. Thank you. you know, take care. Have a great New Year, everyone. You too. Thanks, Brian.